So the last of our five finals this afternoon and it's women's doubles and this exciting new pairing from China. Cheng Shu and Zhao Yunlei up against the number four seeds from Malaysia, Chin Yi Hui and Wong Pei Ti. Malaysians, not only the number four seeds, but reigning Commonwealth Games gold medalists won that title in Melbourne in 2006. Chinese pair have had a great run through in this tournament, defeating the number five seeds and the number one seeds. Cheng Shu and Zhao Yunlei. Wong Pei Ti, the right hander, Chin Yi Hui, the left. And there the Malaysian fans seeing themselves on the giant television screen here in this wonderful arena, the Tokyo Metropolitan Gymnasium. It really is one of the most outstanding venues ever used in world badminton. So with so many of the top Chinese women's doubles pairs and players retiring post-Olympic Games. This, I'm sure, is a pair that we're going to see an awful lot more of. Of course, the 2004 Olympic champions, Yang Wei and Zhang Jie Wen, losing in the quarter-final to a Japanese pair, the number one seeds here, Maeda and Suetsuna. And with that, they left badminton, went into retirement. Gao Ling in retirement now, or so we're, we're told, is likely to be in retirement. Wei Li and Zhang Jie Wen, Zhang Ya Wen, saying she wants to quit. So these players are the future of Chinese women's doubles. And as always, every new pair that emerges from China in women's doubles is immediately a success. 21, 22 years of age and looking at their results through to today's final second round victory over the number five seeds Ha Jung Un and Kim Ning Jung two straight games in fact all of their matches there in two straight games but that semi-final I was mentioning against the number one seeds Miyuki uh, Maeda and Satoko Suetsuna very impressive when you consider that they dumped to be then reigning Olympic champions out of Beijing. So Chin Yi Wei has had many an injury problem. 26 year old from Pulau Penang and her partner also 26 years of age. World ranking of 11 CD4 here. The world ranking incidentally has dropped because of Chin's injury. They haven't been able to play that many tournaments but they are without doubt the most successful Malaysian pair ever in women's doubles. Terrific semi-final, the last match on court late last night against the number two seeds from Indonesia, Vita Marissa and Liliana Natsia. Three tough games, 21-18 in the deciding game. And the remarkable thing for the Malaysian pair despite the fact that they've been playing together since December 2001, that's almost seven years together, they have never won a Grand Prix Gold or Super Series tournament. Three times they've been runners-up, 2005 Dutch Open and Indonesian Open, and then earlier this year the Thailand Open. But for the Malaysians, this would be a huge breakthrough if they were to win this title. Of course, the Malaysians hit the headlines when they reached the semi-final of the All England Championships last year. First ever Malaysian semi-finalists in the women's event at the All England Championships. So our court officials, Ben Mund from the United States is in the chair. 
Yoshiyuki, our Ladies first job. Ladies and gentlemen, to my right, Yi Chen Pei Ti Wang, Malaysia. And to my left, Cheng Shu, Zhao Yun Li, China. Yi Yu Chen to serve to Zhao Yun Li, love all, please. So the Malaysians nearest to us, Chin Yi Hui and Wang Pei Ti, up against the new Chinese pairing of Cheng Shu and Zhao Yun Li. And interesting that the umpire putting the family name before the given names with the Chinese pair, but not with the Malaysians, who are both of Chinese origin. All their families are, I should put it that way, Chinese Malaysians. Opportunity for Wong Pei Ti. Yeah, she knows it. Look of anguish on her face. Ah. Yes, good smash too from Zhao Yun Lei. And a very, very good start by the Chinese pair. Well, I thought the Malaysians last night in their semi-final against Vita Marissa and Liliana Natsi, the number two seeds from Indonesia, I thought that was the best form I've seen them in for a long while. And it's because the left-hander there, she's had her injury problems, bad back, hasn't been able to train properly. So it was good to see them back in such form, but not able to reproduce it so far in this final. It's very early stages. Constructed rally. Cheng Shu in control. The little block, rack it up ready to intercept the second one. That's wonderful play. rally. Perfect placement of the final smash from Chin Yi Hui. Service over. Three, six. Bisecting her opponents. Well, 
Well, it's certainly Wong Pei Ti, who's usually the more animated of the two Malaysian players, as we could see at the end of that rally. Oh, she put that away with venom. Eight, five. It had been a mishit defence. Deserved to be put away. But she was going to make no mistake about that. Really wonderful. Both the Chinese players really do hunt the net. Stand their ground, take the half chances. It's very impressive. Yeah. So too is that return of serve from Wong Pei Ti. Seven nine. at the moment. China has been allowed to attack whenever they want. Not convinced that's all that sensible by the Malaysians. They have got terrific defences, the Malaysian pair, but I'd like to see them take a little more initiative in the rallies. Good return of serve. <laughs> that is brilliant. Inspirational play from Wong Pei Ti. Nine Saw the gap. Opening game. Ah! So it's the Chinese combination with the two point advantage. Now yeah, it's a good smash down the tram lines. And look how Chen Zhu had moved right across. She knew that if the reply, the shuttle came back, it would have to come back straight, and she was ready and waiting. Chen Jun, two time Olympic mixed doubles champion in 2000 and 2004 with Gao Ling, now coaching this women's doubles pair. 20 seconds. 20 seconds. a little hand signal to her partner what sort of serve she's going to use and the error on well, the turn the Malaysians have got to tighten up their game just a fraction if they want to get back into this only a three point margin Super play by the Commonwealth Games gold medalist. Ten, twelve. Oh, 
dear. That's a pity from the Malaysian's perspective. Service over. 13 10. Still can't get the shuttle over, even with the practice serve. Long of the back line, two flats. 14, 10. And of course, perhaps not match fit. Ginny Wee, having been out with injury problems. Uh, well, I said in the early stages. I wanted to see them attacking more because whilst they had good defences, this just illustrates how good they are when they're hitting the shuttle in a downward direction and being the aggressors. Wee. Played with disguise, and it left Zhao Yunlei stranded. Success with the low serve, one wonders why she threw in the flick. Gave Jao the opportunity to attack. Ah! 16, 12. Yeah, took the shuttle right off the top of the tape. Super play from Cheng Shu. bronze medalist at the World Championships in mixed doubles. Playing with Kuki and Kiat three years ago. And that's the sort of shot that shows that you're not match fit. Match fitness has got nothing to do with physical fitness. It's sensing the right moment to really make your opponents play. <laughs> Keep it steady. And it's the player who's been out injured that is 18, 13. breaking down at the moment, at the crucial moments. Doubles. 19, the commitment in that rally from Zhao Yunlei was absolutely superb. There she is. Thank you. 
completely this time the shots on that occasion. interesting to me that the majority of the time the Malaysians are concentrating their attacking play on Zhao Yun Lai and then as soon as they switch it to Ching Shu they're getting success I think she's frustrated that she's cut out of the rally for so long she came forward at exactly the right moment and now Four game points to the unseeded Chinese pair. One has come and gone. Still have another three. Brilliantly saved from the left hander. 18 20. Well, would you believe it? 19 20. Three game points have come and gone. Just one more as far as the Chinese are concerned and just one more to save as far as the Malaysians but not this time fourth time of asking and Chen Shu and Zhao Yunlei have taken the opening game 21-19 confirms the umpire 17 minutes and there were some terrific women's doubles. Lovely rallies. Good attacking play, hunting the shuttle. Well, Zheng Jun was very animated as a player. It's just as animated as a coach. talking to his players, still offering advice. the opening game 21-19 and Cheng Zhu and Zhao Yunlei get this second game underway and the number four seeds from Malaysia Chin Yi Hui and Wang Pei Ti certainly have some work to do to turn this match around Good serve. Oh, 
down. Go to the toe bone. Two, one. Mm. Disappointment and frustration as far as the Malaysians are concerned. Oh, definitely right idea from Wong Pei Ti, trying to guide the shuttle across court. She did that quite beautifully in the opening game for the outright winner. Couldn't manage it on that occasion. That's uh, nice. Swiping across the shuttle, looking as if she was going to play it across court, but keeping it straight. Good deception. Three all. I'm not quite sure what the delay was, and the umpire says, come on, play. It's a good rally. It's a great interception from Wong Pei Ti. That was the one. Set herself up. Simple put away in the end. Four straight points for the Malaysians. Make that five. Good flick serve. Lands on the line. Six. Disappointed than her with that. Yeah. Yeah, good return. And seven four. Considerably more urgency at the start of this second game from the Malaysians. More positive looking for things. Just asking if she can tell down. The umpire says no. Not while well the momentum and the serve is with your opponents. You want to break up the rhythm, you do it when you're on the roll. For good. Yeah, correct call it was too.
great play and a spell of play by the Indonesians, sorry, by the Malaysians. for Malaysians lead. looking very much as if they now believe it can be done. Of course, they've dropped the opening game, but with an 11-4 margin in the second. Zhang Jun, coach to the Chinese women's doubles pair here. It's got to somehow inspire his players, get them to change tactics. At the moment, Malaysians in the second game are controlling. Well, Chinese pair simply when they are given the opportunity to attack are not penetrating in the same way as they did in the opening game. And the Malaysians playing a patient game. Yeah, that's nice. Once again, the sort of swipe across the shuttle looking as if she's going to play cross court. And the left-hander keeping it straight. That's nicely done. And a nine point advantage now. That's drifted wide. Fourteen four. Ten point advantage and eight straight points for the Malaysians. Go wide too. Nine straight points. Fifteen four. Yeah, she looks confused. She really doesn't know what's gone wrong. Ah, oh, now that was interesting. He was writing his notes with his right hand. He always played badminton left-handed. back of the court from Chin. Yeah, keeping it on her the whole time. Just want to work her. She's the one that's been out injured. And in the end, the Malaysian persistence pays off. to believe. Ten straight points to the Malaysians. Pushed it long. Oh, this is extraordinary. This was an opening game. But when you think that the Chinese won that opening game, 
21-19, so everybody was played into the match. Now to lose 12 straight points. Extraordinary. The points have actually been won, most of them, rather than the Chinese pair losing them. Been won by the Malaysians, and they had good play. Oh, it's called out. Well, in my commentary position, I'm looking straight down that line, and I wasn't exactly convinced by that call. The Malaysians not arguing because they're so far in front. And we are going to have a third and deciding game. That's going to go out as well. The Chinese pair have completely lost their form. But they've been forced into that by the Malaysians. 15 game points. Well, we'll just take the first. What a turnaround. What an extraordinary run of points. 12 points in a row. From 6-4 up to make it 18-4 up. And all of a sudden, well, after the opening game, certainly had my money on the Chinese pair to take this final. It's obviously can still go either way, but the dominance in that second game by the Malaysians, guiding drop shots, varying the pace, that was a beauty by Chin I Hui to close out that second game. And then you can see 6-4, and then as that graphic moves on, look at all of that, extraordinary. 12 straight points. No wonder that Zhang Jun is talking long and hard to his players. They will be very dispirited after that second game. And what they have to do, of course, is just forget about that. Say, OK, right, start again. But I can assure you as a player, as much as the psychologists and the coaches tell you just to forget that, concentrate on the next rally, virtually impossible to do in practice. In reality, your mind can't help but go back. And here we go. Third and deciding game. concerned that the Chinese players trying to waste time in between rallies. Well, up until that point, they'd won 17 of the last 18 rallies. Error on serve from Chinny Wee. Panic, I think, setting into the Chinese defence. Oh, 
Oh, that could be a turning point. Very, very hard fought rally. Nice play from Chen Shu. In fact, it was Zhao Yunlei that hit the winning shot. flat it's gone along of the back line and it's interesting all our finals today players at the far side of the court as we look down which is where the Chinese pair are at the moment have all tended to do better when that far side Racket speed from Cheng Shu. It's a little push, and then look at how quickly she reacted and drove that shuttle back. And it's just extraordinary how the momentum has switch back in favour of the Chinese pair. It was all the Malaysians in the second game. Yeah, in fact, an 11-4 lead as they change ends in this deciding game. 
And when they've just lost a game 21-5, you wouldn't have predicted that. And now it's the Malaysians who are looking despondent, dejected. And the Chinese pair back looking buoyant and excited and confident. Six straight points to the Chinese pair. And what have the Malaysians got left? Can they respond? Well, the answer, if that rally is anything to go by, is yes, they can. with a little squeal of delight from both the Chinese players as they saw the shuttle hit the top of the tape just go over with their desperation defence that's cruel from the Malaysians point of view well I think Chingy if we actually changed her mind Look, she appears to be leaving it and then all of a sudden realises that the shuttle has made contact with the racket. It's at the moment a complete reversal of the second game. what she was doing so well in the second game was reading and anticipating what was going to happen next intercepting at the net and it's command of the front of the court that has been the decisive factor no question about that both in the second game and now so far in the deciding game so if the Malaysians can wrestle away the commands at the net, and they're in with a real shout. They're only five points adrift now. Chinese asking to tell down, on passing, no. That's pushed wide, my goodness, she took it. long yeah the disappointments 14 eight that's a good low serve from Q 
Ching Shu. And time running out for the Malaysians. just suspect that that rally might prove decisive. Misjudgment at the back of the court from Ching I Hui, landing just inside that back line. And now an in eight point advantage. 16-8 for the Chinese pair. Make that 17-8. It looks to me as if the Malaysians know that their chance has gone. Never won a major international competition. Grand Prix or Super Series Malaysian pair. And unless they can produce something quite extraordinary at the end of this game right now, it will be too late. It won't happen here. And there's no question in my mind, the Malaysian pair have the capability to produce something quite extraordinary. They have to believe in themselves. And as far as the Chinese are concerned, they have to keep calm, not panic. They've got a good lead. This is intriguing. Good judgment. Landed wide. Two or three more points without reply for the Malaysians. And my goodness, this would become absolutely fascinating. at the front of the court from Wong Pei Ti. Had to move the full width of the court. The Chinese want the shuttle changed. The Malaysians say no, the umpire says the shuttle's fine. This is all getting very intense. Chinese saying the court needs to be mopped, the umpire saying that they're wasting time. The umpire won't tolerate too much more of this, I don't think. Lots of discussion between the two Chinese players. They are worried. It's a good serve. The Chinese will be mightily relieved that that run of five straight points to the Malaysians has come to an end. Well, the umpire spotting that perhaps Zhao was interfering with the shuttle. Asked her to change it. Ah! 
Oh, it's landed in. Misjudgment once again from Chinny. We just two points away now, this Chinese pair from their first major international title. Well, one of the pairs had to win the first Super Series title of their careers because neither of them had done so previously. It's a perfect smash. Zhao waited committed to her four to her backhand defence, the smash going down her forehand side. And that's great awareness from Jin Hui. Fifteen nineteen. can't afford any errors and they know it the intensity of that rally just three points the deficit now having been nine points adrift at one stage Well, we've had some terrific finals today, but this 19. beats a lot. 17-19. Having been 8-17 down. Oh, in the end, a terrific smash from Chen Shu down the centre of the court, confusing the two Malaysians. Twenty map points. So, three match points now to the Chinese pair. Japan Open for 2008. They've won a magnificent final against number four seeds Chin Yi Hui and Wong Pei Ti. Three pulsating games. 21 18 in the deciding game in 54 minutes. Disappointment, obviously, for the Malaysians who await their first major tournament victory despite playing together for almost seven years. So the Chinese players um, being talked to by their coach Zhang Jun, the 
host broadcaster we want a quick word with them too gives us an opportunity to reflect on today's finals what a day it's been only one of the finals not going the full distance and that was the men's singles that was the only one in two straight games but Indonesia taking two titles with Rijal and Amarissa in the mixed doubles defeating the reigning world champions Widianto and Natsia, their teammates and of course the reigning world junior champion Wang Yi Han defeating Xiaomi of Hong Kong men's singles well I don't think Lee Chong Wei has really recovered after the Olympic silver medal but Sonny Dui Kunchoro the number two seed was outstanding today in that men's singles final men's doubles was another three game and a new pairing from Indonesia to take note of for the future Asan and Septano defeated though by the former world champions and the reigning European champions Lars Porska and Jonas Rasmussen of Denmark and as we've just witnessed women's doubles terrific match with Cheng Shu and Zhao Yung Lei coming through in three tough games against the Malaysians Chin and Wong so that's just about it from the Yonix, All, the Yonix Japan Open for 2008 of course we will have the prize presentation for the women's doubles in just a minute but what a wonderful competition it's been as always the presentation here at the Japan Open is stunning the play has been wonderful the officiating has been marvelous and we've thoroughly enjoyed our time here this year prize presentation for the women's doubles coming up in just a moment Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to draw your attention to the awarding ceremony for the winners of women's doubles. So the fifth and final prize presentation at the 2008 Yonix Japan Open. It's women's doubles and what a match it was. Cheng Shu and Zhao Unlei, a new pair from China, but taking over the mantle from the great pairs and pairs that have gone before them. They are the champions, China's tradition in women's doubles continue. Chin in Kui and Wang Pei Ti made it a terrific final by the quality of their play and how lovely to see them back in such terrific form after the injury problems that we've seen in recent months from Chin in Kui. So the winner's trophy. and thoroughly deserved the trophy did this pair beat the number one seeds in the semi-final the number five seeds in the second round and have now just disposed of the number four seeds the established pair from Malaysia Malaysian ambassador presenting the medals for the women's doubles the golds Zhao Yun Lei receives her gold medal. And for the Commonwealth Games gold medalist from two years ago. This time a silver medal, but this time at the Yonix Japan Open. Well, they've had a great tournament, beating the number two seeds in the semi final. Yama, president of Yonix Company, presents the winner's cheque. This, of course, was event number seven in the Super Series 
12 tournament series and the tour moves on next week to China. And many of the players, most of the players who have competed this week in Tokyo will be traveling on to the China Masters Super Series in Qingzhou. So it really has been a wonderful tournament this week here in Tokyo. Two titles to Indonesia, two to China in the women's singles and the women's doubles, one to Denmark in the men's doubles. And as the women's doubles players pose for the photographs, that concludes our coverage from this year's Yonex Japan Open. From all of us here in Tokyo, and especially for myself, Jill Clark, until the next time, bye-bye.